It's the Packet Froa! Welcome to the channel! Have you ever seen that old show, Third Rock from the Sun, where John Lithgow is an alien and he and his family are come to Earth to observe us and send reports to the big giant head? The 90s was a fun time. But anyway, there was an episode where they go camping and one of the characters has a trout and one of the characters has some peanut butter and they end up fighting and eventually the trout gets in the peanut butter and the characters end up arguing because you got trout in my peanut butter and no you got peanut butter in my trout but eventually they try it and find that hey it's pretty good together now at this point you might be wondering if i've lost my mind but stick with me for one second here what if the trout is a virtual machine and what if the peanut butter is a container and yes i will go this far to make a metaphor work in VMware Workstation 16, they have added container and Kubernetes support. So let's have a look at that. If this course is your first exposure to virtual machines, you might be wondering, okay, that's great, Don, but what exactly is a container? Well, to put it simply, a container is a VM without all the fat. So if we look at what's in a traditional VM, we have our hypervisor. In this case, this is our VMware Workstation. And then, Inside there, we actually have our virtual machine, and this is basically gonna be holding all our settings for our solution. And then inside there, we actually install an operating system inside that virtual machine. And then usually, we have to install some form of applications for this to work. So this could be our web server, this could be a database, this could be a domain controller, whatever. So for a container, what we're trying to do is we are eliminating the operating system layer. And we do that by sharing the operating system bits with the container. So in a Linux uh, system, this is pretty easy because a container is really just a bunch of Linux technology, such as namespaces, to um, tie things together. So what we have here is we have our Linux, and then we have our app that runs in the container, and uh, ev keeps everything nice and uh, clean this way. Now, the reason why this is beneficial, for example, every time we deploy a virtual machine, we are deploying an operating system. And this has a lot of overhead. We have a lot of space. Each operating system is usually at least 10 gigs uh, to do an uh, install these days, and usually a lot more depending on what options we pick. And on top of the space, we have to uh, do our onboarding stuff. So we might need to uh, join this to a domain. We'll have to worry about security, so we'll have to do our patches. And we have to worry about our networking to make sure that we have the right IP addresses and DNS names and whatnot. So this can be a lot of work just to get a single virtual machine up and running there so we can get a solution there. And a lot of solutions these days are using uh, several VMs to get doing there. So for example, if we're doing a three-tier application, well, we have a web VM. We have a database VM, and we have an app uh, VM which runs the actual application. But with the container, each one of these is its own little container, and all we need to do is deploy the individual application specifics uh, for the solution, and we don't need to worry about deploying something like Ubuntu every single time we run it there. So if we have a Linux container, And we want to run a container that has web services like Apache or Nginx. How do we actually do this in a Windows environment? Well, we can install a solution called Docker. And this is by far the most popular container solution out there. This runs on Windows, Mac, uh, Linux, pretty much every operating system out there. But there is a catch because Docker and Windows requires Hyper-V, which is the Microsoft hypervisor. Now the downside to this is if you are running Hyper-V, that means that traditionally you cannot use VMware Workstation or you can't use VirtualBox because the Hyper-V uh, claims the entire virtualization capability of your CPU and it locks everything out just the way the solution works. So on VMware Workstation 16, 
they have worked out a way to interact with the Hyper-V APIs so that you can actually use a VMware Workstation when you have Hyper-V installed. But there's another catch because if you do this, you cannot run nested VMs anymore. And the reason why is because when you're actually running a virtual machine, what you're really doing is you have your VMware and then it is really passing that over to Hyper-V and then running the virtual machine and it gets into uh, problems there when you're trying to also run nested there because Hyper-V doesn't really do nested very well. You have to expose it with PowerShell commands and it gets pretty ugly. So fortunately, VMware came up with a new way of doing that there and they have their own solution called VCTL. And this is bundled in VMware Workstation 16 and the new version of uh, VMware Fusion for Max. And this lets you run your containers and your Kubernetes without actually having to install the Hyper-V. So you get most of the benefits of having a Docker installed, but you don't have to deal with any of the downsides of having a Hyper-V enabled. So the way this actually works is we have our hypervisor, which is our VMware workstation, and it installs an invisible VM that will run all our Linux uh, dockers there because remember we have to share the operating system and then we can run all the containers we want from there and that is how the solution works. It doesn't have 100% of the features you get from Docker there but it's good enough for having a simple lab environment there without having to change your system all that much. Well, that should be enough theory. Let's hop over to the command line in the next video and start playing with this. I hope this has been informative for you and I thank you for viewing. Have a good one.